Hello Foam Fighters, I'm Dr. Flux and in today's video we're taking a look at the new reskin of the Frantic Fury and I actually did a review on it in the past. Now this blaster before was a little bit cheap. It had a lot of creaking and as we can see here the plastic quality is better so I figured I would give this another chance and take a look at it because before it did have pretty subpar performance. So if you want to see how well this blaster performs as far as range, accuracy, and just overall FPS, stick around and let's dive right in. So the Adventure Force Frantic Fury is a blaster that I've actually reviewed before. That version of the Frantic Fury was a little bit cheap and you could tell with the plastic that if you went like this, you would hear it creaking. And this is actually quiet which is pretty reassuring. So hopefully the build quality of this is a little bit better. In this package, it comes with a blaster, a barrel attachment, a illuminating scope or hollow sight. Uh, this takes two double A's. We have a double clip that actually snaps together so you can, so it's like a flip clip. And what you can do is you load 10 darts in each one. So a total of 20 darts, you know, ready, ready to just flip and uh, get another 10. So kind of a cool design, comes with 20 darts. And this package makes a claim of shooting up to 100 feet. Uh, my package is a little bit banged up and ripped and bent. Uh, this is kind of the standard uh, way I'm seeing it. A lot of Walmarts kind of treat their products. Made a comment about it. Kind of got the cold shoulder. So I figured I'd bring it up that, yeah, these things are uh, really banged up, bent up, ripped. And in this case, my scope up here is actually almost looks like it's damaged. I hope it still works. But uh, yeah, something to consider when shopping at Walmart. Uh, they really toss this stuff around, so hopefully everything works fine. But yeah, let's get into this box and see how cool this blaster is, if it's better than the old one, or if it's just pretty much the same thing again. Oh, by the way, we will be testing the 100 feet claim, so stick around for that. Now, when I first saw the Frantic Fury back at Walmart, I was uh, actually not looking to grab one just because the performance of the one I purchased before, I believe it was the red variant, which I actually did a mod on, uh, it, it didn't have great performance. So uh, right now in the current ecosystem, as far as stuff that's offered at Walmart or Target or wherever, Dart Zone and other Adventure Force products are just very good. It's very hard to compete. So a blaster like this, I think is a little bit dated. I did hear that this thing had an overhaul and in the package, I could tell it did have better plastic. So I figured I'd go ahead and check it out because if this thing just had better plastic and then a spring, a, a better spring, I think it'd be a pretty good performer. So I decided let's go ahead and pick one up and take a look at it. Unfortunately, this didn't perform as well as I thought. Yeah. So. I went ahead and did some chronograph numbers on this thing. And as you can see, I did the barrel attachment with the regular Busby long distance darts. So then we decided to do chronograph readings without the barrel to check to see how much of a drop in FPS that is. And it is noticeable. It's about five to 10 sometimes. And then finally, I figured let's check out the Adventure Force waffle because that is kind of becoming our standard ammo type aside from the new half dart that Dart Zone is offering. So as you can see here, we had not the greatest numbers from here either. I did also get a weird thing where every once in a while on Prime and Fire, the dart would just plop out. <laughs> it was kind of a weird sight to see and I did see it multiple times so I don't know what's going on there. 
So let's take a moment to talk about ergonomics. So the only mounting we have on this blaster is this Picatinny type-esque mount, which isn't Picatinny, it isn't in strike. It's kind of Busby's own creation here. I do like this scope, this hollow sight, if you will. It does light up and it is kind of cool. Other than that though, there's not a lot going on. I mean, I guess this is a sling point here. Uh, the stock is really bad, unfortunately. In its closed position, I can't even use this. And I did address this on my first review. And then when it's fully open, it's a little bit too much. And I have a thing where it kind of falls out of my arm. It doesn't really hold it. So fully extended is not that great. And then fully closed is unusable for me. So I have a tendency to just keep it in, in this, well, if I can get it right, there it is, right here. So there's three positions. You have the full closed, you have the middle, and then the full extended. So the middle is not horrible, but it's not great. I'm not too big of a fan of it. And then of course we have this kind of priming handle up here, which is, is fine, it works fine. The pistol grip on this with the knuckle duster is actually comfortable for a Busby handle. Let's talk about the next performance issue. So we decided to take this out and test the claims of shooting 100 feet. And no matter how I could arc this thing, I was actually trying to shoot it into the wind. I did have the wind kind of at my back. I could not reach 100 feet. I think the closest we got was like 97. Uh, the range claim thing, I, I think if I sat there all day shooting, I think eventually I could get 100 feet. I know it's one of those things where it says up to, so it's like, you know, in perfect ideal conditions, this could shoot up to 100. I'm not gonna say that claim is false, but at the same time, as a consumer, when I see a range claim of 80 or 90 or whatever, I, I would like to see consistent fire at that range. So that's my personal opinion, but I mean, you can take it as it is. 100 feet is quite a claim for a blaster off the shelf. So there is that. And when I fired this thing, feeling the spring, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even think it was gonna get close to 100 because it's, it's a pretty weak prime. Like it's, it's, it travels like nothing. The spring is, there's hardly, it feels like there's nothing in here. I know there's some mods that we can do to this to increase uh, the spring. I think we can go up to the, either a 9K or a 7K, something like that, like a retaliator spring. So that that's a really cool thing to do. I know uh, Mongoose Jake did a video on how to mod this, or at least the Busby variant. But yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately it's just not performing as well as I'd like to see. And I say that because for $20, for 20 US dollars, I think, and if I'm at Walmart, I would rather grab a Villainator or a Max Havoc or save my money and get a Dart Zone or an Adventure Force Nexus. So with those things out there, it's kind of hard for me to really get behind something like this unless you truly like the aesthetics of it. If this is your jam and you like how it looks, grab it, but keep in mind, you're probably gonna need to throw a spring upgrade in it at a minimum to get the performance to kind of be on par with what's out there right now. And now let's talk about accuracy. So I went out and shot some cups. And of course the Busby long distance darts are almost unusable for me at this point. They are a very inaccurate dart. Yes, they they travel far and they hit hard, but I would trade all that for just a more accurate dart. And that's why I switch over to the Adventure Force Waffle, which is much better. So overall, would I recommend this blaster? Like I said before, if this speaks to you, if you think this thing looks cool, you'd like to paint it up, which I did in one of my videos. If you're looking for a reliable primary that hits hard, I'd probably go with something else. At least the Villainator. I mean, if you, if you had a choice between this and the Villainator, I'd probably go with the Villainator. Or even, and if there's not one available, even a Max Havoc. Some other, like a Super Drum or 
I think uh, the Adventure Force Super Drum is a great, I, I'd take that any time over this. So, well, I'm Dr. Flux, and that pretty much wraps up this review of the Adventure Force Frantic Fury. Let me know in the comments section if this is something you're looking to pick up or is this something you'll probably pass up due to the greater offerings out there by Adventure Force and Dart Zone and even Busby has some really good new products. So curious to hear what you have to say. I want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, keep in mind, I now do have a Patreon up and I do have a PO box running. So uh, more information in the description for that. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. And as always, happy foam flinging.